but I think I can take on basic Schedule Cs. I don't want to go through, I don't want to actually do the tax return to for flow through entities, S corporations and partnerships and corporations, which aren't a flow, you know, a corporate tax returns, because then you have to file an actual separate return or, or possibly you, you don't file the separate return. You won't do the corporate return. You'll just do the business return after the corporate return has been done by someone else, right? You might just say, I only do the form 1040 uh, individual income tax returns. So, so you really want to think about that because it's really difficult to tell clients no, right? And that's what you need to know what you want to do and what you don't want to do, know what you know, know what you don't know, and don't let the client try to pressure you into taking on work that you're like, I'm not, that's not my thing. I'm not doing that, uh, and, and which can be difficult. So then we've got, that'll give us the total tax. And then we've got, and then again, you think you'd be done right here, but you're not because now you've got the tax payments and uh, refundable credits. Okay, so first of all, we have these credits. We already saw the credits up top. So you're like, what? I already dealt with the credits. Why are there another credits down here on this line item? And that has to do with refundable credits versus non-refundable credits. Now, a non-refundable credit is is what we used to think of as kind of a normal a normal credit, meaning a, a tax by definition means that you either owe money or you don't owe money. So when we talk about the income taxes, then usually what we're trying to do is lower the amount of tax that we have to pay. The money's only going one direction normally for a normal tax system. It's going from us, the earners of the money, to the government. That's the way it's going. And if we get a credit or a deduction, those are the two things that could lower the amount of money that's going from us to the government. So taxes traditionally do not wind up in the money going from the government to us. Right? You might say, well, there's a refund, but normally, traditionally, the refund means the money went from us to the government, but we paid, we overpaid, and therefore they are refunding the overpayment. The refund isn't money that's going from the government to us. They're not paying us just to, you know, they're not, that's traditionally what happens. So, so that would mean that the credits up top here are the types of credits that do not bring taxable income below zero because that wouldn't make any sense. If you don't owe any tax, uh, if, 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 you, if you're saying, I don't have any tax to pay right here, and then you had a credit, which would be available to take if you had tax to pay, but you don't have any tax to pay, then, then you're not gonna get a benefit from the credit because the government doesn't pay you. The money only goes one way. It's a tax. You pay the government or you don't pay the government. However, if it's a refundable credit, that equation changes, right? So now you have a situation where even if I don't owe any money, the government gives me, the government, the money's going from the government to me, right? In those situations. So, so it's not a refund, even though it's going to be qualified, counted as a refund. In that case, it's more of a, a benefit or of a welfare type of program that's worked into the tax code. And so, so it complicates the tax system, but a lot of people think that the tax system is the best way to deal with the safety net uh, kind of issue. So now, we, so now we have these breakout between the credits that don't take the tax below zero and the credits that do. The ones that don't are called non-refundable. The ones that do are refundable. To make that even more complex, some credits that are refundable have a refundable portion to them. So we then have to determine what portion of the credit is refundable, what portion is not. Then we have the payments. Now, the tax system is set up so that the government does not want to allow you to wait till the end of the year. So if we're talking about 2023, then you can't just simply pay all of your taxes when the tax return is due on April 15th, let's say, of 2024. It would already be late. You would be hit with penalties and interest. The government wants their money during the year. Why? Well, one, because they want the money as you earn it and there's time value related to money. So they want it sooner rather than later. And two, they don't trust you to hold on to the money that you have earned during the year to be able to pay them at April 15th of the following year. So they wanna force you 